Minecraft 1.17 is on the horizon, and with the unconfirmed release date marching ever closer, we figured it would be a good idea to do a quick recap on the most important things you need to know. Greetings gamers and welcome back to Top 10 Gaming, I'm Connor Monroe, and this is the top 10 things you need to know about Minecraft 1.17. Let's do it. Day 10, Skulk Sensor. Skulk Sensors are one of the coolest things to be added in the Minecraft 1.17 update, and the first really good redstone addition for a while. The Skulk Sensor acts as a motion sensor, taking the vibrations from various movements and sounds, and turning them into redstone outputs. So you can have piston doors that automatically open as you walk up to them, or traps that activate whenever someone is nearby. However, one of the coolest things to be introduced with the Skulk Sensors is the Skulk Frequency, which is a way of determining what sound is heard, since each different noise noise puts out a different output level, and using a simple circuit you can adjust to only output for a sound of someone walking or breaking a block. Unfortunately, you can't really use it like a proximity detector, since if you can't hear the sound because you're out of range, the skulk sensor still can, but that's a small price to pay for such a cool addition. There will be plenty of traps made with this bad boy, I can tell. Day 9 Copper Copper is a new ore being added that we have been long awaiting. Basically every industrial mod has some form of copper, and now they won't need to add a million different ones. But this copper is different. It's only used in a couple recipes and is the first metal block to be made out of four ingots and have a stair variant. Plus, it can also oxidize like the Statue of Liberty. I'm sure you've all seen the time lapses already. Well, to prevent oxidization, you need to wax them using honeycomb and this will keep their level of oxidization. But it doesn't look like you'll be able to revert them if they weather, at least for now. The oxidization is now no longer on a timer, but rather tied to the random tick speed of the world like the growth of grass or crops, meaning that it could happen as soon as you place down the blocks. So waxing is now ultra important so you can keep the look that you want. Copper will also replace gold in the drowned loot table, making it possible to make a copper farm, even if it's not a really efficient one. And a dripstone. Dripstone is a new block that basically acts as stalagmites and stalactites in the new dripstone caves. Them falling on you can cause damage, and falling on them triples the fall damage you take, meaning it's possible to die from a mere 6 block fall. It's also possible to use this as an infinite lava farm, finally fulfilling our dreams of fueling all our furnaces with lava for all of eternity. Simply place a dripstone below a block with a lava source on top and then put a cauldron underneath. Eventually it will fill up, and you can take it out with a bucket and repeat the process. Many redstone and minecraft youtubers have demonstrated different farms for this, some on the prettier side and some on the more industrial side with a load of cauldrons all being pushed through a piston feed tape. I myself am looking forward to this and I'm excited for this finally to be a reality. I've been wanting infinite lava for forever. And it's 7 Powdered Snow. Powdered Snow is just another way for the Minecraft world to try and kill us from my estimate. You can get it most frequently by placing a cauldron in the snow and waiting for it to fill up, but powdered snow blocks will also generate in the world. The introduction of the powdered snow also adds freezing damage, where if you get trapped in a powdered snow for too long, you will start to freeze to death, which is understandable, but my character is Canadian, okay? That shouldn't happen with me. No matter, this also now has an impact on skeletons, since if they freeze to another death, much like a zombie drowning, the skeleton will become a stray, one of the mobs that nobody really knows about since it kind of flew under the radar when it was added. They're basically a skeleton with some ragged torn clothes that shoot you with slowness arrows that only spawn in cold biomes. But now there's a way to kind of farm them, but I don't see the benefit in doing so. And 6, Archaeology. In the 1.17 update, you'll find various excavation sites located around the map like generated structures. These locations will contain chests that have brushes inside. You will be able to make these brushes, but currently we don't know how. Using that brush, you can now excavate specific blocks, like gravel or dirt, in an attempt to uncover hidden items inside. If you don't do it properly, though, you could break any item that's in the block. You'll be able to find things like ceramic shards to make new pots, or even blocks of emerald and diamonds. That's all we really know about the archaeology aspect of the game so far, but I'm excited to look for cool things. Imagine if you could find like netherite scrap in the nether if you use the gravel that's there. That would honestly be pretty cool and would make archaeology interdimensional, making it worth doing in the nether. Since gravel is used for things like concrete now, which many players need a lot of, especially if you're doing a huge build. 
All right, throw number five, goat. Goats are a new mob being added in 1.17 that will be found in mountain biomes. They will be able to knock entities far away and jump fairly high in the air. Goats will often attack other entities and knock them off the cliff when they get too close, excluding throwable items, vehicles like minecarts and boats, and potentially the player, since goats will also protect the player from any hostile mob. Hopefully, including the creeper, since all these iron golems don't stop shit. If I see one more creeper, I'll be pissed. The mountains are also getting an update thanks to the 2019 biome vote, where mountains got the most votes. Obviously, it was a vote. And goats are also present in the Minecraft Dungeons DLC Howling Peaks. Do any of you play Minecraft Dungeons? Let me know. How is it? Like, I've been debating, I've been thinking about getting it, but I, I, I don't know if I'd enjoy it. Let me know. And it for Warden. The Warden is planned on being the first blind mob added to the game. Obviously, unless you count my dog who can't see the damn skeleton right in front of him. Anyway, they will appear deep below ground and will be located around skulk sensors and seem to have a connection with them. Since they use similar vibrations to determine where their prey is, you can use this to your advantage, however, by throwing a snowball in another direction. The Warden will be the most powerful mob in the game, with currently 42 hearts, which is 84 health, and a max damage of 30. One, enough to seriously damage anyone with even netherite armor. You can sneak past, but if you attack it enough, it will concentrate on you and won't get distracted by other noises. So you best make sure that you have good gear and armor, because Jesus. If a warden is nearby, all light sources will start to flicker, indicating its presence, and that's terrifying as all hell. Its heartbeat is also audible, meaning that you can hear it while it's killing you. And the lower its health gets, the stronger it gets, which is probably where that max of 31 comes from. And the faster its heart beats, at least giving you a slight indication of how low it is, but you gon' die. Goddamn, you gon' die. It's inevitable. Getting close to the end in number three, Axolotl. Axolotls are tameable aquatic mobs that will spawn in the rivers of lush caves. You can pick them up with a water bucket, meaning that you can name them easily. And they even come in different colors, pink, brown, cyan, gold, which is my personal favorite, and a rare blue, which has a 1 in 1200 chance of spawning, basically the Minecraft equivalent of a shiny Pokemon. The axolotl prey on fish and squids, hopefully including the glow squid, and can fight against drowned guardians and elder guardians. Axolotl can be bred with tropical fish, and unfortunately can lose the player if they get distracted by a fish and it gets too far away. If attacked, the axolotl will play dead for a moment before regenerating health and rejoining the fight, so they can probably only only die by your hand like followers in Skyrim, so be careful. These things look adorable and I can't wait to have as many as possible in an aquarium so I can swim with all my axolotl friends forever. Hopefully they won't bring Bill Cipher back though. And it too, Glow Squid. The Glow Squid is probably the dumbest mob to ever be added to Minecraft, no cap. Sorry if you voted for it, but the Moo Bloom is so much better. Cows could have been like the Minecraft chameleon gods, but instead we picked the freaking glowing squid. These squid don't even emit light and will be found in rivers of the updated caves. They drop glow ink sacks that are currently only used to make glow item frames and can be used on signs. If made into a glow item frame, the item in the frame won't be affected by the light level of the world, making it always is visible, which isn't really useful because why would an item frame be somewhere where being affected by light level would make it worse? Like if it's in a storage room, you need to light that up, otherwise creepers. And if it's outside, then having it affected by light level will just make it look better. And if used on a sign, the text will not be affected by light level, which I guess is kind of useful, but I still prefer the Moo Bloom. That's my head cannon. Mo Yang, please add the Moo Bloom. Captain Sparkles has the right idea with a server that just constantly kills Glow Squid, okay? I'm on that 24 set. Kill them all. Finally, in a number world, new world height. The Minecraft world height has largely remained the same. For years, the highest you could build up was 256 blocks, and the lowest was to layer 1. However, now thanks to the Caves and Cliffs update, the Minecraft world is being expanded vertically. The new max build height is 320 blocks up, and the world now goes lower, with the bedrock layer being generated on y equals negative 64, which is crazy terrifying since that's where we'll find the skulk sensors in the deep dark. Caves also go this low, so the new area is isn't wasted. However, my confusion comes from how ores will generate and operate. We've known diamonds to generate at Y level 16 and below, and it's been like this for over 10 years. Does that mean that diamonds will generate from Y16 to negative 64, or will the diamond layer be lowered to accommodate the new area? Is the nether also getting this world expansion? And if it is, how will netherite mining be affected? Will one ore vein still generate below Y15, or will it be lower to make it still fairly easy to find enough to upgrade? If it is expanding, but not 
moving, Netherite could be even more elusive and difficult to find. This is going to be a game changer for sure, especially if everything we know about Minecraft gets upended. There we have it friends, the top 10 things you need to know about Minecraft 1.17. Keep in mind that the update hasn't come out yet and isn't set to release until sometime this summer, so these points could change, but this update is still looking incredible. What do you think about this update and what are you excited for in it? Be sure you let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been and shall remain Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.